Amy for reporting a co-worker to HR for trying to feed me? I, 24 male, am a small man. 5 apostrophe 4 and 103 pounds as of my last physical. I'm well aware I'm at an unhealthy weight. My entire life I've been small mostly due to illnesses and myriad allergies and it's admittedly a sore spot. I am working with my doctor to gain weight while still fitting in with my dietary restrictions, no meat, dairy, gluten, or nuts, and honestly I'm so much better than I was a several months ago and proud of myself for the progress I've made. A co-worker, Peg, 30 female, got pregnant and recently returned to work late November she's been increasingly overt and uncomfortable in her concern for me. Peg made and brought in cupcakes for her return, and when I thanked her for thinking of us but refused, citing my gluten allergy, she was visibly upset. She didn't shout or complain much, just sighed heavily and said that she would put this one in the break room with the rest. I felt awful. Then, she brought me a steak sandwich the next day, on gluten-free bread. Again I thanked her, but I had brought in my own lunch and needed to focus on that. Peg told me it was in the fridge for when I finished. Ended up bringing it home so she wouldn't feel bad and gave it to my BF. Next day, she approached again. I refused again. She insisted. By now we weren't alone in the break room. She joked that it was rude to refuse a home-cooked meal in favor of that, my lunch. At that point I just took it and thanked her. BF ended up eating it. Then she just started leaving bagged snacks on my desk. She would approach with a snack or a portion of whatever she made for dinner the night before, and not leave me be until I had taken it. I went to our boss and explained that I felt uncomfortable and was told that she was probably feeling maternal and it would negatively impact morale to discourage her. So, been taking notes since then, what days Peg has given what, when, who witnessed it, etc. from 12 eighths to now she's done it 23 times. Yesterday I took Peg aside and explained that while I was touched, I would appreciate if she wouldn't bring in anything else. She said that I should have said something sooner, she was only trying to help, have I seen myself in a mirror, does your boyfriend like you starving yourself? Among other phrases. Livid, I told her that maybe I didn't feel like sharing my personal medical history with her just so that my wishes were respected. For God's sake we work with a hospital, don't you know anything about HIPAA? We parted from there me childishly storming off and her in tears. Have I already been a huge ass and would a report to HR just be the icing on the escape? Web link. Edit, to address a few commonly raised points. I said no thank you, repeatedly, to her face when she gave the food. She in turn would refuse to leave my desk or to stop talking to me, in the break room or halls, until I took it. She returned to work late November, before Thanksgiving, and started this behavior almost immediately. I waited until 12 eighths to speak with our boss, who is a woman, if that matters, and only then started counting the incidents. She is also no longer pregnant, rather I should have said that she returned from maternity leave. Edit 2, 1 8, I'm aware I misused HIPAA but was referencing it in the context that she should know better than to pry into medical history to satisfy her curiosity. Also I wasn't thinking clearly when I said that to her. Edit 2 post the post being locked. NTA. Even if she stops now, you can tell HR that you had a discussion with her and you do not require action at this moment, but you want to put this on record. Consider this, what if she complains to HR about a hostile work environment? Make sure your side of the story is on record somewhere. I went to our boss and explained that I felt uncomfortable and was told that she was probably feeling maternal and it would negatively impact morale to discourage her. Can I just say that this boss is a huge asshat? Your co-worker is clueless and annoying, but your boss should have taken action here. They just didn't want to deal with it so your complaint wasn't properly addressed. She's the biggest TA in all of this. Edit, boss is a woman, not a man. Thanks to those who pointed it out. Consider this. What if she complains to HR about a hostile work environment? This, and you already know your boss is not really backing you up. When you complain to HR, be sure to use the phrasing focus on slash commenting on my body, in addition to any ADA concerns. I'm assuming you're in the US, but many Western countries have similar laws. Hijacking to add that in addition to the well said above comments, this is not a matter of you could report to HR, this is a you must report to HR because, unfortunately, if it's not documented it either didn't happen or was not bad enough to consider reporting so it's your word versus hers. 
It is always necessary to report to HR if somebody is harassing you like this, as well intentioned as it may seem. Good intentions don't make bad actions okay. You expressed how you wanted to be treated and she is not getting the message, this must be documented as it is very likely to occur in the future. All of this, op. Especially if you're in the US, if you fail to report something to HR and someone else beats you to it then your side of the story is pretty much screwed. I would have immediately reported it to HR the moment my boss didn't do anything honestly, but I can understand why original post didn't. When you do report it to HR, make sure you mention to them the interaction with your boss. Because I'm damn sure they'd be interested in why the boss didn't step up to stop the behavior the moment they were told it made you uncomfortable. Her intentions and her feeling maternal are 100%, irrelevant the moment you express that you don't care for the action, not to mention, since when is it an excuse in a professional environment to say your coworker might be feeling maternal towards you? WFT? Would it be pertinent here to say that the road to hell is paved with good intentions? I think the boss should be mentioned to HR, too. Agree, boss needs to be accountable. I do think there is some reverse sexism at work as well, due to the person being approached and body shamed a man, and the boss and person shaming both women. Reverse sexism is just sexism. Yes, thank you for that comment. I actually meant to put reverse in air quotes, that was part of my point. No harm done, I just wanted to point it out. So that would make it not sexism? Was going to add same point, I'm curious if she does this for anyone else. I'm guessing no. I'm guessing no one else is as underweight. Could you imagine if she was wandering around the office taking snacks from overweight people and asking why they wouldn't prefer her nice healthy home cooked meal, to that, that being whatever they had chosen for lunch for themselves? I'd be heaving my fat ass right to HR and demanding she be put back in her box, pronto, well meaning or not. Original post should not have had to tolerate this at all, never mind for so long. The manager should have nipped that in the bud from the start. This. You should go to HR to have your side on record. Also, inform them of your boss's kind of rude dismissal of your concerns. And that when you tried to nicely talk to her about it she made rude horrible comments about you and your body. She was only trying to help, have I seen myself in a mirror, does your boyfriend like you starving yourself? Among other phrases. These comments are horrible and HR should be notified. Not the butthole. Right? That upset me deeply, I struggled so badly with food allergies when I was a teen that I looked horribly anorexic and I hated it. I would be in tears if someone said that to me, like I'm not choosing this. And to insult my partner would infuriate me. Edit to add not the butthole. Not to mention that he could have an eating disorder for all she knows, so she could well be harassing someone with a mental illness, which would be a clear violation of ADA, as far as I'm aware. Edited to add, it probably is either way. Also, I know original post is dealing with allergies and not disordered eating, even though coworker seems clueless. But even if it was an eating disorder, none of this is helpful. Coworker is not ops therapist or registered dietitian. Plus a lot of ed are about control, so like. Basically trying to control what someone else eats and constantly commenting on their food slash body sounds like disordered eating hell WTF. Agree. Imagine if this was someone in the opposite situation with a high BMI and their coworker gave them unsolicited low calorie food or took their food away or made comments about their weight. Pretty clear to see that it's harassment. I also doubt the boss would have reacted that way if original post was a female and the co-worker doing this was a male. NTA. Backhanded misogyny. Don't see that often. Not the butthole yes you might have just told her to stop at the beginning without giving your medical history but she likely wouldn't have listened. I would report her and your boss. Boss should have stepped in the moment you asked. Literally just finished a work harassment training and this is like, checking all the boxes. Unwelcome and pervasive, changing the dynamic of the workplace, and supervisor has not stepped in. 23 effing times? I'm surprised original post has been so patient, breaks my heart he'd feel bad for this. Aren't those fun? I've led the two hour manager sessions in the past and yeah, this is both a problem because of his food allergies, which could be considered a disability because his ability to process certain foods impacts the major life activity of eating and its gender stereotyping. 
If original post was 5 feet 4 inches, 104 pounds, and female, no one would take issue. If original post was 5 feet 4 inches, 104 pounds, and female, no one would take issue. That can be untrue at times though. I've heard a lot of skinny girl getting harassed because you're so skinny. It's not healthy to starve yourself. Or you need to eat and put some meat on those bones. It can happen to both genders and it's equally as hurtful to both, this lady's just a freak. Yeah when I was about that weight, I'm femme, I got a lot of crap for it. 104 at 5 feet 3 inches slash 5 apostrophe 4 is definitely a size people will make comments about regardless of your gender identity unfortunately. I really feel for op. This isn't his fault and it is much unwarranted. Also, not the butthole. Oh yes. I got harassed much more about my weight when I was very thin than I do now that I'm very overweight after having kids. Just want to jump in this thread to say skinny girl here. Always had issues with weight and struggled for years to put on weight. Been to dietitians about it and everything. I get these comments almost effing daily. It sucks so badly. I feel like people think it's okay to make comments to skinny people because we all wish I had your problems. But they do not get it how hard it is to not be able to keep weight on. I think the comment that hurts most is I wish I could lose weight like that generally if I dare say anything about having lost any weight which unfortunately happens frequently. But if I were to turn around and say I wish I could put weight on like you do I would absolutely be considered a butthole. People don't seem to understand that gaining weight can be just as much work for some as losing weight is for others. I was extremely underweight prior to having children, couldn't keep weight on for the life of me. So much so that it was severely impacting my health, I was always in pain and was sick almost constantly. The you need to eat. Only dogs go for bones. Eat a burger. Comments were disgusting and frequent, and did a lot of damage. Ong, um, you're so skinny, it's disgusting. Ong, um, just go eat a cheeseburger slash pizza slash etc. Or something. Ong, um, do you ever eat? Ong, um, what are you, anorexic or something? Gross. These are all lines I've heard repeatedly throughout my life as a small, thin person. I have fast metabolism and can't gain weight when I try, without eating much more unhealthy food than I should, skinny shaming is a definitely thing and gets treated as much more socially acceptable than fat shaming, even though it's every bit as rude. This co-worker needs to be put in her place. Edit. A forgotten letter makes a new word edit too, just remembered this gem, Ong, you're so tiny I could snap you half. Ong, no. If you ever have this thought about someone, please keep it to yourself, thanks. I'm always surprised at comments like this. I was very thin in my early 20s, 5 apostrophe 6, 100 pounds at my thinnest, and I don't recall anyone ever commenting about my weight. Other than my doctor, for obvious reasons. Now that I'm 50 pounds heavier, on the other hand. And ironically, I'm actually a healthy weight now, despite what dudes on the internet try to tell me, edit, I just remembered, the only time I ever heard comments about my weight when I was thin was the time I visited the US. Maybe it's an American thing? Healthy is best, and a bit different for everyone. Internet dudes, they don't matter, lol. Maybe it's an American thing? Most probably. In my case, Yes. Grew up in a state with one of the highest proportions of obese population, actually obese, not just overweight, making me very thin by general comparison and the target of a great deal of not so subtle resentment and just joking behavior from acquaintances and strangers alike. It's decreased over the years, but I'm not sure if that's due to a general cultural shift or just that I'm personally surrounded by fewer Oz now. I mean, I could stand to lose a few pounds, I gained the COVID-10 this year, like a lot of people, but I'm a perfectly healthy weight, according to my doc and every BMI chart I've ever seen. There are just some people out there, mostly men, let's face it, who think any woman who weighs more than 120 pounds deserves to hate herself because fat is unhealthy. I guess I'm lucky that people in real life don't comment much on my body. My overweight friends do experience some in-person fat shaming, which sucks, I've been lucky that all the disparaging comments I get are either online or from my mom who had nothing but nice things to say when I was 25 pounds underweight, lol. Weirdly, that one trip to the US where people did comment me was to LA. You'd think they would be used to seeing skinny people? Anyway body shaming is stupid as hell, people should mind their own business.
trip to the US where people did comment me was to LA. Oh no, Lamau. People should mind their own business. Absolutely. My favorite comment when I was 5 feet 8 inches and 105 pounds was Ong I've never seen you eat. Do you eat? Yeah, I ate. But generally not much because I was always stressed the F out and it killed my appetite. Also definitely not around other people because I had slash have severe social anxiety and get overly aware of how I'm eating my food slash if I'm being judged for it. Nowadays I'm at 5 feet 10 inches and 200 pounds, and get to be the target of fat jokes slash fat comments. There's really no winning when it comes to weight, especially as a female, as society tends to view us as objects who are fair game for unwelcome public appraisal. It's pretty eye-opening to go from one extreme to the next, and pretty interesting in general to notice the shift in how people react to a pretty person versus an ugly person. I think it says a lot more about them than it does about the person whose looks are being judged. LOL and shaking my head and I've never seen you eat. Yup. Well, I've never seen you poop, but we can all still safely assume you do so. Or you caught me. I'm actually a plant-based alien life form requiring only water, oxygen, and sunlight to survive. Don't tell anyone, okay? I don't want to be a scientific research subject. I get you on a food-based social anxiety. Emo, it's hard not to feel anxious when we know someone is scrutinizing our actions. I'm so sorry you've had to deal with not just one extreme but both, but really admire your attitude toward the whole thing. Judgmental attitudes absolutely say more about the people dishing them out than the people at the receiving end. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube. And share them with your friends. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. We welcome your comments below. Another of our videos will begin shortly.